Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hello everybody, Cappy here, and uh, we got a couple uh, requests to put in from Asshole Consulting, and if you have a question or want some guidance or leadership or insight or something, want questions answered, you can go to assholeconsulting.com and uh, send me your email. We're having a little bit of email troubles, so I got rid of the email form, and you just send it to aaron.clary at assholeconsulting.com. So go to the website and just copy and paste that email. And uh, if for some reason I don't get back to you or I don't get your email, uh, email me by going to my blog. Go to capitalism at yahoo.com. That's C-A-P-T, the abbreviation for captain. Not captain capitalism, that goes to somebody else. Although he'd appreciate the email, I'm sure. Uh, it, so try the asshole consulting email first, and if that doesn't work, or if you just don't hear back from me, I always get back to people. Then it either got into the spam or something like that, so contact me that way. Anyway, young man writes, Good day, Aaron. I'm a real estate valuer, retraining myself into business valuation, and to do that, doing a graduate diploma in applied finance through Kaplan, which looked more industry-focused than similar courses at university. The subjects are a bit over $2,200 each and needing eight subjects for the graduate diploma, three, to go from the, uh, three left to go from the end of this semester. I'm paying for it through a government program called Fee Help, where the loan is indexed to the CPI, and you pay it back through a levy and a tax time once you earn a bit over $55,000. I think he's from Australia. This is PA. I don't know what PA means. Similar scheme available for undergrad degrees when I did my Bachelor's of Commerce, Property Economics, and paid it back in about four years. Anyway, one of the elective subjects is technical analysis, so I was hoping you could share your thoughts on technical analysis and the theory of efficient market. Cheers. Uh, well, yeah, I can. Uh, let's explain it first for uh, those who don't know. Uh, efficient markets, uh, or tech, well, let's, let's do uh, the theory of efficient markets first. Uh, efficient markets theory is the theory that markets are efficient. And what they mean by that is that they incorporate all the possible and known information in the stock market, in the trading's ups and downs, and the buys and the sells orders, and that it represents with complete information then what represents uh, uh, the true value of that stock or you value all the stocks of the company so it's and the the financial formula uh, or formulae plural uh, is accurate that that is that is true I know some people academics might disagree but the formulas that have been derived in, in finance you you read through them you look through them you say yes that makes sense that that is a logical or correct model or formula we're going to use so if we plug in the correct data we should get an accurate stock price now it's all theoretical because that's precisely it what if your data is wrong do we have complete data and the truth is you never have complete data. Nobody has complete data. It's more of a theoretical, can markets or how efficient can markets be? And if you, if you had efficient markets, completely 100% efficient markets, you wouldn't have a lot of this going on in the stock market. It'd just be <laughs> that because it'd be efficient. We have all the information we need. We've calculated the price. The price is this. It's not undervalued, overvalued. It's this. And it just stays there because everyone's, yep, that's the price. So the it, it's kind of... I don't know, cute, fanciful thinking, because if efficient market, you could, you could see empirically that there is no such thing as efficient markets because we have volatility. So by the nature of changing prices, unless the information changes, you know, tornado hits facility and destroys it, okay, then it goes down. But you wouldn't have this constant uh, ebbing and flowing of, of, stock price, of stock prices that we do today. Now, interestingly enough, markets over the long haul, tend to be efficient. They've done studies, and it's, it's kind of like it tends to be efficient. So if a bubble occurs, and we got uh, dot-com bubbles where the, the wrong information is being fed at, or people are just idiots, uh, it comes crashing down. People who buy the house come crashing down. People who get a degree in English comes crashing down. So over time, as more and more information is entered into this market, Stock prices or any kind of asset prices tend to finally trend around being efficient, but it's never 100% efficient. It undershoots, it overshoots. 
Um, and, and you're always constantly trying to get a new and hit a moving target because there's always new information uh, uh, affecting stock prices. Uh, so the, the short answer is that efficient market theory is sort of right. Uh, but to have completely efficient markets, that's impossible. Now, what is technical analysis? Well, technical analysis, there's two types of analysis you can do when it comes to valuing a stock or any other kind of asset. And it's not even valuing, it's trying to figure out whether you want to invest in this asset or not. And there's technical analysis and fundamental analysis. Uh, the uh, uh, company, or not the company, the class I offer called the analysis evaluation of stocks, that is based in fundamental analysis. And what fundamental analysis is, is you want to know what the true value of that stock is. So you try and get all this information, you run and calculate some ratios and statistics, you do some uh, valuation methods, you can use market inference pricing, discounted cash flow, there's all these other type of ways you can value a company. And then you look at this company, you analyze it, you, you get some estimated stock prices where you think it should be trading at, and you compare it to the stock price, uh, uh, the uh, share price in the stock market. And if you your models and your research and your estimates say the stock should be valued at $85, but the um, current market price is $50, you say, oh, that's a pretty good buy. I think it's, I think it's undervalued. Or you, you think it's, your models again say that's worth $85. And it's trading at 120 You say, whoa, that's, that's overvalued. I'm not paying 120 bucks for that. So you're, you're, you're looking to see whether or not that is a good deal for you, a long-term buy and hold strategy. Are the dividends worth it? Are the earnings worth it? Is the price currently worth it uh, as it is today? Now, technical analysis doesn't give two flying shits about that. It doesn't care of whether there's debt, whether they're profitable or not. It does not. I mean, they might. Some models might. But technical analysis tries to make profit, like day traders, on changes, quick and short-lived changes in the stock price. So these are your day traders, and they borrow you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, and they, they, uh, they, they leverage it. And so if the stock goes up 20 cents, they, they make you know, $40,000 on all these um, shorting it, going long, whatever. But you're not looking at it as a long-term buy and hold investment. It's not an investment. It's a short-term position you're going to take in the anticipation the stock is going to go up just a little bit or a lot, and then you sell right out of it. So it, it looks at patterns. And if you see, uh, well, like stochastics, that's a, like a, a statistical uh, analysis, user technical analysis. But if you look at technical analysis, just do an image search, you'll see the stock price, but then you see all these other variants and the rolling 200-day uh, average, the rolling 50-day average, and... Um, the, your, your boiling our bands and all this other stuff. And uh, it really is like, well, if, if this green line passes the red line uh, on the up and on the down, then you buy. But if, if the blue line, heaven forbid, <laughs> crosses that orange line, God, you better short it. You better sell. And uh, because it's technical, this is where your computer programming and algorithms get, get in. And so you don't really need a human. You need, you need a human to program a, web, a, 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 a computer to say, okay, look, if this happens, X percent, Y percent, whatever, sell. If this happens, buy. And then it, it, it is based off of simple changes in, in the stock price. So uh, technical analysis, basically summarizing it, you look in the past to see if you can identify patterns, and then either you're actively trading as a human or you program a computer or, or some kind of program or algorithm to capitalize and benefit off of those trends. Now... <clears throat> Do I believe in technical analysis more than fundamental analysis? Do I have a preference? A lot of people ask, like, well, which one do you prefer? It's not an issue of prefer because they are designed for two different purposes, or both to make money. But fundamental analysis is for investing long term, and technical analysis is for speculation and profiteering very quickly. So, and I'm not against either. If you can make money doing technical analysis, certainly go ahead and do it. But in terms of what you're going to school for, I don't really think you're going to need technical analysis. As an appraiser, at least here in the States of property, we have three different methods that you have to appraise property and assets by a cash, what was it? What was it? Sales, income, something else. I'd have to look it up. But... You, you're, it's, I don't think you're, you're ever going to use technical analysis as an appraiser. Um, it, it may be interesting, but I, I don't ever see you using that in, in an appraisal type career. Uh, but in terms of whether technical analysis, a lot of people say, well, fundamental analysis, that's what the adults use. And technical analysis, that's what these crazy you know, day traders. <laughs> well, there are, there are instances where technical analysis, there are trends, there are patterns. And 
the reason you can get away with technical analysis sometime or technical trading is because markets are not 100% efficient. Right? Uh, you can you rely on that volatility. You may you don't really care what the underlying reasons are, the philosophical aspects of you know efficient uh, of markets. You just care that there's volatility and you can make some bank on that. And uh, a lot of these technical uh, traders, uh, their algorithm, they're very advanced, very complex, and there are patterns because humans are ultimately what are driving these stock prices and humans engage in patterns, either on an individual level, a macro level, a global level, there are patterns. They may not last forever, but while they do last, they can be exploited and profited from. Um, so that that is... Um, that, that, that is the, the thing with technical analysis. Um, one, one other thing I did, I forgot, I got ahead of myself. One other thing I'll point out about why efficient markets are, are there, it's a theory, will ever be, forever be a theory. You, you also have to look at what intervenes and prevents the market from truly being free. And you have government intervention like the Federal Reserve, you know, toying with interest rates, uh, understating them. That leads to bubbles that we saw in the housing bubble. Um, you have, uh, the government interfering with labor markets, all these different rules, regulations, and that's not necessarily even a bad thing. Uh, it's just that once you have it intervened, now you have it's 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 uh, muddied. You're, it's not clear. It's not uh, transparent as to what is the effect. Can all the information get to the market without going through the worrying and fear of what government is going to do and pork and all that, and then. Um, also things that are non-governmental, say like high frequency, like the technical analysts, you have these things called high frequency traders. These are computers that are programmed. Sometimes they start to manipulate the market. They'll send in a huge buy order and then they'll drive the price up and then they'll even send in a larger sell shorting it. And so this is where you get into market manipulation where technical traders actually, it's like the tail wagging the dog. The technical traders who are not, have no interest in fundamental values, in having prices truly represent the true value of a company or a stock or a bond or any other security uh, starts to distort the market. It is no longer efficient. I'd say if you look at retirement, quantitative easing, high frequency trading, your, your markets are actually less efficient today than, than they were in, in times past. Um, but you know, it's, it's just a kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing. So anyway, I hope that answered your question. Um, and we all learned something about technical analysis and fundamental analysis. But yeah, you're not going to use technical analysis as an appraiser for property. And that they'll have, I'm sure you've probably already taken the, uh, the classes on the different, uh, you know, uh, valuation techniques. Um, but you know, if you want to take a class on technical analysis, you can, but I, you're probably not going to use it unless you get into day trading and you have a fair amount of money to operate with. Anyway, best of luck to all of you. Toodles.